Hello and welcome to the I, your English News Bulletin. I'm your host Akivito and these are the headlines. Union Health Minister Mansuk Mandavia on Wednesday informed that all states will be provided with over 2 crore additional COVID-19 vaccine doses in August. Amid the fresh turmoil in Punjab Congress, AICC in charge of the state, Harish Rawat said the party will contest the 2022 Punjab Assembly elections under the leadership of Chief Minister Captain Amarinder Singh. Although Union Minister Narayan Rane was granted bail by the Magistrate Court in Mahad in Raigarh district of Maharashtra, Hours after his arrest over his remarks against State Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre, the court has ordered the Union Minister to be present at the Ratnagiri Police Station for inquiry on August 31st and September 13th. Owing to the prevailing security situation in Afghanistan and streamlining of the visa process by introduction of the e-emergency ex-miscellaneous visa, it has been decided that all Afghan nationals henceforth must travel to India only on e-visa. And now the news in details. Although Union Minister Narayan Rani was granted bail by the Magistrate Court in Mahad in Raigarh district of Maharashtra hours after his arrest over his remarks against State Chief Minister Uddhav Thakre, the court has ordered the Union Minister to be present at the Ratnagiri Police Station for inquiry on August 31st and September 13th. Narayan Rani's advocate Sangram Desai said that while granting bail, the court has put certain conditions. He shall be present at a police station for inquiry on August 31st and September 13th and shall not commit a similar kind of offence in the future. Meanwhile, BJP leader Pravin Darikar informed that the party would restart the John Ashirwad Hiyatra in Maharashtra on Thursday. Mahad Magistrate Court has granted bail to Union Minister Narayan Rani in connection with his alleged statement against Maharashtra Chief Minister Udav Thakre, Darikar said on Tuesday. The party will start a John Ashirwad Yatra the day after tomorrow, Darikar said. Union Minister Narayan Rani on Tuesday was granted bail by the Magistrate Court in Mahad in Raiga district of Maharashtra hours after his arrest over his remarks against State Chief Minister Udav Thakri. The bail has been granted on furnishing a personal bond of Rs 15,000 as per sources. Rani was sent to judicial custody earlier on Tuesday after he was produced before the Magistrate Court in Mahad in the Raiga district of Maharashtra. Rani was arrested in Ratnagiri district after FIRs were filed against him. He had on Monday accused Thakre of ignorance about the year of India's independence at an even and said he would have given a tight slap. Shiv Sena leader strongly condemned Rani's remarks. Party leader Vinayak Raut sought his removal from the union cabinet. FIRs were registered against Rani at several places including Nashik and Pune based on the complaints filed by Shiv Sena leaders. Pune City Police Commissioner Amitabh Gupta said a case has been registered under sections 153 and 505 of IPC at Chato Shringi Police Station and an, invest and an investigation is being held. Amid the fresh turmoil in Punjab Congress, AICC in charge of the state Harish Rawat said the party will contest the 2022 Punjab Assembly elections under the leadership of Chief Minister Captain Amarinder Singh. Briefing media persons after a meeting with a delegation of Punjab ministers and MLAs at his residence here, Rawat said the party will contest the 2022 Punjab elections under the leadership of Captain Amarinder Singh. Earlier, he said that the party had an idea of turning up of possible issues after the organization changes in the state unit. However, he said that Congress will look into the matter and find a solution. Speaking to ANI, Rawat said, such issues happen in the party. 
Assuring to find a solution, he said, everyone trusts Sonia Gandhi and Rahul Gandhi. The party will look into the matter and try to resolve it, Rawat said. A section of Punjab Congress leaders expressed their resentment over Amrinder Singh to party high command. They demanded the removal of him as chief minister citing his working style is harming the party and the state. This internal feud pours in just days after Punjab CM Captain Amrinder Singh on August 11 raised his concerns in front of Congress interim president Sonia Gandhi regarding the recent statements made by Punjab Pradesh Congress Committee Chief Navjot Singh Sidhu after his appointment to the post. According to party sources, Amrinder Singh had complained to Sonia Gandhi that Sidhu's criticism of his government is not good for its smooth functioning gives a bad impression in the public domain. Union Health Minister Mansuk Mandavia on Wednesday informed that all states will be provided with over 2 crore additional COVID-19 vaccine doses in August. Taking to Twitter, the health minister said that the central government has requested all the states are requested to try to vaccinate all school teachers on priority before Teachers' Day, which is celebrated on 5th September, Mandavia tweeted. According to the Health Ministry, more than 58.07 crore COVID vaccine doses have been provided to states and union territories so far. Owing to the prevailing security situation in Afghanistan and streamlining of the visa process by introduction of the e-emergency ex miscellaneous visa it has been decided that all afghan nationals henceforth must travel to india only on e-visa keeping in view some reports that certain passports of afghan nationals have been misplaced previously issued visas to all afghan nationals who are presently not in india stand invalidated with immediate effect informed an official release by the ministry of home affairs Afghan nationals wishing to travel to India may apply for an e-visa at the official website. India, on August 17th, had also announced that it would issue an emergency e-visa to Afghan nationals who want to come to the country in view of the prevailing situation in Afghanistan after the Taliban captured power there. All Afghans, irrespective of their religion, can apply for the e-emergency X miscellaneous visa online and the application will be processed in New Delhi. A screening camp for ear and hearing issues was inaugurated on August 25th at the Pom Lempong School in Longleng. This screening camp is scheduled to be conducted across Longleng district covering Sakshi, Yachim, Yongnya, Tamlu and Buranamsang areas. The camp is sponsored by a couple, Benjong Ayer and Dr. Ubang Jungla, the chief medical officer of Longleng. Speaking during the occasion, CMO Dr. Obang Jungla spoke about why she and her husband decided to organize the camp for the people of Longleng district. She said hearing and ear problems are a preventable disability, but when it is not treated properly at the right time, it could lead to major problems. With timely intervention of medical specialists and use of new technology, she said such problems can be treated. She encouraged the gathering to inform the public to have a health-seeking behavior and avail the services. Speaking on the topic, importance of ear and hearing care, ENT specialist Dr. Teja C.V. Chase said that loss of hearing is the most common sensory disability in the world today. He said most newborn children below the age, of, age group of 1 to 2 years who find difficulty in speaking are children with impaired hearing. He informed the people to get their children treated at the right time. The Taliban have said that religious scholars will lead the upcoming government in Afghanistan as the country's government collapsed over a week ago when the terror group seized Kabul, a media report said. The Taliban said that their 20 years of struggle should not go in vain and religious scholars should take the lead and be the core of the upcoming government in Afghanistan. The terror group had invited tens of religious scholars in the grand gathering to ask their cooperation in forging a sound political system and inviting people to support the future government, Afghanistan's Kama Press said on Monday. Zabiullah Mujahid, the Taliban spokesperson, said that they are creating an all-inclusive government in which the rights of all people will be secured. 
Irrespective of the partisan, lingual and sectarian values, the people should come together and work for the development of Afghanistan as Afghans, Kama quoted him as saying. The Taliban are in talks with intra-Afghan leaders in an attempt to form a government. Mujahid had denied accusations that the Taliban are smuggling weaponry and military vehicles to other countries. U.S. President Joe Biden on Tuesday said that the Taliban will be judged by their actions and G7 leaders, European Union, NATO and United Nations would respond to the terror group's behavior accordingly while collectively agreeing to support refugees and evacuees that are currently fleeing Afghanistan. EU, NATO, United Nations have agreed to stand united in the U.S. approach to the Taliban, he said at the White House. The U.S. will judge the Taliban by their actions and the U.S. will stay in close coordination on any steps that the U.S. takes moving forward in response to Taliban behavior, he said. Biden said the U.S. is on track to get all of its forces out of Afghanistan by August 31, as he had previously laid out but cautioned the timeline is dependent on cooperation from the Taliban. The U.S. is currently on pace to finish evacuation by August 31, and the sooner they complete it, the better, he said. But completion by August 31 depends on the Taliban continuing to cooperate and allowing access to the airport to those transporting out and no disruptions to the operation, he said. Biden, in an address on Afghanistan, hours after meeting with other world leaders on the evacuation of efforts, said he has asked for contingency plans in the event more time is needed, but he stressed that the situation could deteriorate the longer the U.S. remain in Afghanistan. Four coaches of the Guwahati Howrah Special Express reportedly derailed near Chayagaon Railway Station in the Sam's Kamrup district on Wednesday, according to media reports. There was no report of any casualty in the incident, news agencies reported on Wednesday. According to the NF Railways, the 02346 Guwahati Howrah Special Express, which left Guwahati Station at about 12.20 p.m. on Wednesday, derailed at kilometer 136, 5x6 near Chaigao Station at about 1.36 p.m. in the Guwahati Golpada, New Bongaigon section under Rangia Division of NF Railways, the agencies reported. Four coaches of the train, including the pantry car, were derailed, it stated. There was no injury and casualty reported and passengers of the affected coaches have been shifted to other coaches, the report stated. A nurse was shot dead and a doctor seriously injured in a private nursing home in Sitamarthi on Tuesday night when unidentified people allegedly opened fire on them. Tuesday night, soon after Dr. Shiv Shankar Mahato, his wife, two staff and nurses reached the nursing home at Rosa Pati. As soon as they got down from the car, four criminals allegedly started firing indiscriminately, following which three bullets hit Dr. Mahato and five bullets hit nurse Babli Pandey. Pandey died on the spot. Dr. Mahato is being treated at a nearby private hospital. Dr. Praveen Kumar, who is treating the injured doctor, said that Dr. Mahato has got three bullets in the chest, hands and feet. The operation has been done, Kumar said. Dr. Mahato said that there was a dispute going on in the past. When they reached the clinic yesterday, Dr. Mahato said the criminals opened fire. According to sources, Sita Marhi police is questioning the nephew of the doctor. The matter is likely to be related to a land dispute. Dr. Mahato was running the nursing home along with his wife, Dr. Shabnam. Harkishore Rai, Superintendent of Police, Sita Marhi said that the authorities have detained one person. There are family disputes regarding Dr. Mahato's two marriages. And taking note of all these points, the authorities have started an investigation, Rai said. In an affidavit, the Ministry of Electronics and Information and Technology has informed the Delhi High Court that the issues relating to online gambling games unexpressedly falls under the domain of the states and some states have already enacted laws to regulate online games. The center's affidavit has been filed in a plea seeking to ban online gambling websites. It states that the petitioner has failed to implead states as parties to the case which are the appropriate governments in the regulation of betting or gambling. 
proper adjudication is not possible unless the states are made parties in this case, the center's reply stated. The bench of Justice D.N. Patel and Justice Jyoti Singh on Wednesday deferred the matter for October 11 after taking note that the petitioner has yet to be served with the reply copy. It is reiterated that for effective enforcement, the states must ensure that their laws have adequate regulatory provisions to prohibit online gambling. As per the legislative mandate drawn under the Constitution of India, which expressly denotes the states to regulate betting and gambling, MEITY cannot be saddled with a duty to regulate online gambling websites or lotteries, state centers reply stated. Kathleen C. Hockill became the first woman to become New York's governor on Tuesday local time after predecessor Andrew Cuomo resigned over allegations of sexual harassment. History, a woman will enter that arena as governor, Hokul said during her address, adding that she was willing to be bloodied and marred in the pursuit of doing what's right for the people of this great state, reported the New York Times. In her first address as the state's 57th governor, Hokul spoke broadly of confronting New York's most pressing needs, weakened economy, the opioid crisis and the coronavirus pandemic, reported the New York Times. The ceremony, held in the ornate red room on the second floor of the Capitol, was dotted with subtle nods to the barrier-breaking nature of Hochul's ascension, reported the New York Times. Her ascension capped a whirlwind chain of events that followed a series of sexual harassment allegations that culminated with Cuomo's resignation. Hochul assumes office three weeks after a state attorney general investigation concluded that Cuomo sexually harassed multiple women, allegations that he vehemently denied while casting the report as politically motivated. A week later, Cuomo announced his resignation, bringing his ten-year reign to an abrupt end after rising to national fame during the pandemic the previous year, reported the New York Times. And that was all for the eye. For more news and updates, stay tuned to Hornbill TV.